That's the question, why do women cheat? That's the focus of this edition of It's Your Call. Welcome back everyone, I'm Lynn Doyle. You know, so many times we hear about men who have stepped out of a relationship and we are the first ones to criticize them. And yet, as I'm learning, doing research for this show, women are equally as bad at being adulterers. So we're finding out why they do that, what the causes are. We've invited some more guest experts to join us now, including Ruthie Weisberg, who is a journalist and a pop culture commentator. She's been a frequent guest on It's Your Call, and you can find her at ruthweisberg.com. Also an old friend of the show is with us, George James. He's a staff therapist for the Council for Relationships, which is located in Philadelphia. Good to have you guys here. Nice to be back, Lynn. <laughs> George, I gotta turn to you right away. Mm -hmm. Okay, and all this girl talk that we've got going on here, I ask the question, are men forgiving of infidelity? Because so many times when we hear these high profile cases of infidelity, the women take the men back. I seem to think men aren't as, as forgiving. What do you find in your practice? Well, typically you'll hear that guys won't take women back, right? Because it's, it's to feed into their ego, they feel bad, or how can I really be a man? But what I've found out in my offices, when we get couples together who are invested, they're willing to do the work to try and repair their relationship. Really? See, that comes as a surprise, even though the statistics that we are showing today so, show that 31% of those couples who had infidelity in their relationship do end up staying together. So it's possible to, to move on? It is, it is possible. And I've had clients on both sides, male or female, who decided to cheat and the couple were able to work through it. But it all depends on how much they're willing to commit to the relationship and the process of working, working it through. I so think that's the key word too, like invested, mm -hmm. you know, like they, if the couple is invested, they'll do the work because I see the same thing in, mm -hmm. in my practice as well. I got to ask though, if they were invested in the relationship, <laughs> why did they step out <laughs> of it to begin <laughs> with? You know, okay. One of the things I see that is that sometimes it gets to the place where they make whatever choice to cheat. And that is almost a wake up call of mm -hmm. realizing that the grass wasn't greener with the other person mm -hmm. and that what they have is that important and they want to get back and, you know, reinvest. All right, Ruthie, you know that. Uh, there are a lot of different reasons, as, as Deborah's explained, why women cheat. But in your research, what have you found out? What are some classic examples of why a woman has decided to commit adultery? Well, being the journalist that I am and being in media like you are, we both are, we get to cover a whole host of topics and we have some really incredible sources and leads that we've met through the years. And I've read your book, very, very impressive, Deborah. And even though you talk about 11 reasons, I think it boils down to two. Okay. Why do we make a decision? Why do we make a purchase? Why do we make the things that we do? Because we want to or we need to. And in my realm of experience, it can be anything, as you mentioned earlier in the last segment, sometimes women feel like they're not getting their needs met. And I know a situation where a woman is getting in touch with her creative muse, especially if the children are getting older. They're in school, they're moving on. Now she can get in touch with her own creative spirit, but then she has a husband that says, don't do your art, I, I need you to do the kitchen. You know, so okay. there's that conflict there, and then maybe she'll join a group of like-minded people who share their are their arts, and then they're getting the feedback, the critique, the, the strokes, the attention. And there's someone there yes. to who's whom saying, they can relate. Tell me about what you're doing. You're what are you wonderful. Working? What are you working on these days? And then you go home, and they're like, do the dishes. So right. they feel like they're getting the validation and the perks in that realm. All right. See, what I'm finding here is that we have a common theme, and it seems like when women are cheating, it's because they haven't gotten the kind of attention. You can call it needs being met or whatever, but it just seems like they need some attention. And it's the attention. Sometimes it's not even what you're going to do in the bedroom or elsewhere. It's just somebody that's paying attention to you, who's really mm -hmm. devoted to you and is taking an active emotional investment in who you are and what you can become. Yep. And that's very, very heady and juicy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. one of the things yeah. It's I've an aphrodisiac. Yes. Yeah. One of the things I've seen also is that at one point that was okay, you know, to go do the dishes. She was mm -hmm. all right with that. And then there's a life change, life life transition where that's not okay anymore. I'm I'm a different person and I need new things. I'm not okay with 10% attention. I want maybe 50%. I don't mm -hmm. think, um, you know, no offense to males, but I don't think males respond very well to that. <laughs> um, I just, I see a lot of, you know, sort of, you know, gender role stuff too, you know, and I'm sure you see that, um, where if, if the individual is in that role, the female's in that role for, you know, the duration of their relationship, then all of a sudden kind of, you know, wants to kind of find herself, which happens often, um, the male doesn't really know how to deal with that very well. 
um, and it causes problems in the relationship. Well, well see, we have like different expectations, about, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, honestly, it, it's like women like the whole romance and, mm -hmm. and, the, and the whole being wooed, where men are like, okay, let's get to it, you, you know? know? Remember that line in City Slickers with Billy Crystal, they're on the horse, he's with the late Bruno Kirby, and he says, you know, when it comes to sex, women need a reason, men need a place. place. <laughs> <laughs> right? I think you can just still it right down to that, yeah. <laughs> so how do, we, how do we overcome that, though? I mean, it's a, it's a basic difference between men and women. It's, it's why we're from Venus and you guys are from Mars. Well, you know, how, how do we get what, over it? I think what happens is that a lot of couples are unaware of the, the signs, you know, mm -hmm. that something is going on. I think for when we talk about a lot of guys, we don't really see that something is wrong until it's way too late. And now some of that might be what we're used to and how we're taught about how to be with each other. Are you guys just dense? No, <laughs> I would never say that. Not at all. But I think a lot of guys are so used to a certain way of being and that by the time they recognize they need to change, and they might be willing to and want to, but it it's might be a little bit late. too late. I would agree with that. I, I see that a lot. But the other thing also is that, you know, a relationship can be healthy. I mean, we see that too, where like males do meet females' needs, you know, and it can work really well. But as a relationship, you know, specialist and how we deal with these things, you have to continually work at it. I mean, you have to continually put the effort into the relationship and be deliberate. I always tell my clients to be deliberate mm -hmm. with re your relationship if you want a healthy relationship. Don't you find though that, that that's, I think what frustrates people is that they don't want to have to work at something so hard. They just <laughs> want it to be easy. It, it was easy at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Why does it have to be so hard? I have to work at hard, I, at work. I have to work around the house. I have to work raising my children. God, do I, I mean, do I have to work this hard at a relationship? Mm -hmm. And yet we don't want to be Why a mind reader when it comes to our partners anymore that they should be a mind leader when it comes to our needs. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of like making the time and saying this is important to me. Let's see if we can we can do this. I think at some level maybe women want to get caught. Really? I'm going to put Explain that out there. That. Well, Explain I, I disagree with that. <laughs> well, and I'll tell I you why disagree. because sometimes and I and I know someone that should be more discreet and where and how she's having some of her affairs and everything. And I think at some level she wants her husband to say, see, I've been telling you this whole time I need something. It starts a dialogue. Yeah. And yes. as you said, if they're Whoa. on the same page. It could start an ugly dialogue. Yeah, it, 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 it really but, but could. Thing, though, it's passion. I think okay, the worst it. response is when somebody says, whatever. If you get somebody that's full of passion, at least you've got something to work with. Okay, on I that agree. note, I have to take a quick break. But when we come back, we're going to talk more about infidelity, what causes it, why men cheat, and how the reasons for their cheating are different from women. All of that and your personal stories right after this.